Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Minecraft video, and today I'm going to be showing off my Minecraft uh, three-digit clock that counts all the way up to 999 and then resets itself automatically. This design was actually based off an old video by CNB Minecraft. They posted, I don't know, I want to say a good like three or four years ago, honestly. Um, and it kind of uses the same principle on how the clock works, but I it, it's still kind of glitchy, I will admit that. The, uh... The numbers and the way it counts is definitely not the greatest and has some trouble um, updating sometimes with this third digit. Um, and actually right now, of course, as I start as I start this video, I encounter a problem already. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work. So yeah, let me just basically explain how this mess and jumble works. I'm going to actually go over here to demonstrate how this is working. So this redstone contraption here is uh, called a piston feed tape. So what happens is you can see we have a power source with a repeater going through this block here. You can see though that this is glass, meaning it does not emit a signal. But if you were to put something like stone or any other solid block, it would emit a signal. So what you can do is if we uh, hook this up to a loop like I've done here, go ahead and activate this. You can see, and I'll, go, I'll go over here because that's a little loud, but you can see it's pushing these blocks back and forth and just cycling all of them through one at a time. So basically what you can do is if you go over here, let me stop this one. Oops. So if you go over here, you can see you can input and get a um, pistons here that display a, a digit. And then you can input certain numbers uh, using solid blocks by making certain powers, you know, go to certain pistons, and that's pretty much how it works. Uh, I can't really explain, uh, you know, in depth, I guess, but I will do a, a quick tutorial uh, block by block on how to build a piston feed tape, and the good thing is this is infinitely expandable, uh, at least to my knowledge. So, anyways, on to how to build this. So if you're making a clock, what you'll want to do is you'll have to make it around that. Uh, actually, this is... Um, this is how wide you need to make it, because each one of these rows represents a number. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. So what you want to do is, uh, and I'm just going to do this three wide like over here. You're going to want to put pistons here, and I will need glass for this. On one of the corners, you're going to need to build up three like this, and then two over here, so that you have this kind of L shape. And then... Uh, depending on which way you want your output to be. Um, so these pistons here that you place down, these first pistons you're going to place down, the way they push will be the direction the output signal actually goes. So, I don't know why I placed stone here. Uh, you need to put pistons here. And you can see I do have obsidian blocks here. This is just in case something malfunctions and goes wrong. And it's basically just a, um unmovable object placed um, next to where the pistons where the glass is being pushed so that something somehow gets off in the circuitry, it won't push and go everywhere and basically break everything. So then, over here in the opposite corner, what you're going to want to do is build the same kind of L shape so that on uh, two opposite corners you have nothing there. And you're going to want to uh, go ahead and fill the rest of that in. Then up here, what you're going to do is get your um, obsidian blocks. Now, the, again, like I said, the obsidian blocks are optional. You don't have to put the obsidian there, um, but it's just kind of a precaution thing. And I will have to break this glass because we are going to be placing pistons right there because it's going to be pushing the glass that way. Um, and make sure that you do keep this amount of glass in every row or else it could pretty uh, mess it up like pretty bad. Um, so anyways, I'm going to break this glass here again while I place down these pistons, I need to be one higher. Go ahead and do that. Just make sure that all of the pistons um, are facing, so if you have to think if it's pushing, um, so that you know it's not going to get in the way, and that it will, in fact. So you can see this, this glass will push here, um, therefore, it can push up here. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It would start here. <laughs> Okay, so then it would push it over here, there would be an open spot, and y you get the idea. I'm not going to go ahead and, uh, and explain all of that. So now it's time for a bit more of a complicated part, the timing. And uh, while I do uh, explain this, I do apologize if some of my redstone terminology isn't the best. I've never really made a video like this, so, you know, uh, you can't expect me to be the best. So, <laughs> anyways, what you're going to do is you're going to have a row of repeaters uh, into 
these bottom things, no delay on them, then we're going to want to run a redstone line over here. This is going to be where the signal uh, slash input is going to be from your um, your clock. And so you can set this as fast as you want. I think this is about as fast as you can go, but normally I have about, I would say, more than half of them to two ticks. Um, and you can always test this by doing this just to see how fast the pistons would extend. Um, and I need to move this back over now. Gosh dang it. So, go ahead and put that there. Anyways, now, we want to run a line. So you can see over here we have one line going up to the top. And there's also something else you need to take in mind, or take into account, I guess, and that's that some sides, uh, depending on how you want this to work, need to be completely in sync. So you want this, this piston right here, to be in sync with this piston here, meaning they need to push at the same time, and these two bottom and uh, ones need to push at the same time. So this has a two tick total delay uh, from here. It will only take two ticks to push these pistons, meaning you're going to want to use one repeater in between, and you can see over here, all you have to basically do is put a repeater there, um, and then you can't use any more, sadly, uh, you can't use any more um, repeaters on this. So that is kind of a downside. And you can see over here, I did improvise and I made it uh, the repeater up there. And I probably should do this on uh, this one as well. Um, and that's basically just a kind of safety feature, I guess, so that the, um, you know, so it's not completely off and the current wouldn't actually make it that far down. Um, and I need to, I'm sorry if you just heard that notification, uh, gosh dang it, right there, okay. Oof, thought I was going to mess up there. So, go ahead and do that, and see so now, if we go ahead and power this up, you can see they push at the exact same time, which is great. Uh, some of this design does, uh, really rely on the timing of some of these pistons, so now, now that those are pushed, we're going to want to do the next uh, set of pistons. And for that, to get all the way up there and over there, it is a bit complicated, but first we're going to make a little tower here of redstone to carry it up instead of, uh, you know, just making kind of a giant mess. And then we're going to go ahead, run this line right here. So we have, oops, we have uh, repeaters going into those pistons there. Make sure this line is hooked up with this top redstone torch. Then, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did on this side, where instead the current will be going the opposite way. So we're just going to go ahead and do this, uh, and build this basically just down here to the ground level. And you don't have to fill the ground blocks in with stone, but I just prefer to. But see, here's the problem with that. So if you'll, you probably might have already, you know, been typing in the comments, but wait, this uh, bottom set of pistons is one tick longer than this, because there's no repeater here. So all you have to do to fix this problem is go ahead and do that, because now this takes two ticks to get to this, and then there's one tick here and one tick on these repeaters. So now, if we were to go ahead and power this, and I will back up so it's not super loud, you can see that it does in fact push around. Now again, you can fiddle with the timing, let me go ahead and do that here, and you can actually make it somewhat fast, but to a point it does kind of break when you get it fast enough. But, that is pretty much how you build this piston feed tape, and all you would need to do to expand it, let me go ahead and break that, all you would need to do to expand this piston feed tape was basically build this design longer, as you can see what I've done with this clock. So now I've taught you how to build this piston feed tape, I will go into more detail on how you do the second number and kind of the third number, because right now I'm still working on that. Let me go ahead and pause this here, so that it's not ear raping us. And I will explain now how you can go ahead and do the second number. So, let me see what number this is on right now. This is on number 8. And if we go over here, you can see that all of these rows, you know, there's uh, repeaters coming from all these rows, going and powering the pistons for the certain number. But on this last row here, you'll notice something. There's no wool except this one block here on number 8. And I will explain that. So what happens is this wool block comes up. See, this is number 8 right here. 
And because this goes so fast, if you were to put this on 9, this is, you can see already, this is powering this second uh, tape over here, but it only powers it once. So anyways, what happens is, when it gets to 8 over here, all you have to do is go on the opposite side of the 8, make a, uh, actually, you could do that over on this side, but in terms of, you know, just making it more and less confusing, I did it on the other side. But because this clock counts a little bit fast, if you were to put it on the 9, the second digit, when it updates, it would look a little bit off. So I went ahead and put this on an 8. You just need to make one after, uh, you can do this after you have basically set up just a one digit clock. Um, and depending on, if, on how fast the clock is or how slow the clock is, you could put this on a 7, you could put this on a 9, it doesn't really matter. Um, just as long as you have the timing over here, you can see this. Um, this right here basically in turn um, makes up for the short amount of time it takes to get from 8 to 9. So this, um, this signal here, and I'm sorry if some of this is confusing, I'm trying to explain it as best I can, but basically this signal here, um, when it gets to this, it will push down the pistons and push, uh, push up this piston, which um, is basically the piston that will update the numbers. So if we go ahead and uh, start this clock over again, and uh, please excuse the ear ape, I'm trying my best here. You will see, and I'll, I just won't commentate for this part, you'll see this block roll around, you'll see this update. And that's basically how it works. And then, it's the same principle and concept over here, except here's the hard part. So over here, you can see this is being powered very briefly. Let me go ahead and pause this. So you can see it's being powered very briefly, meaning that by the time these pistons push up and down, these piston arms are out of the way, so there's an open spot here. But if we put this on a thing like this, you can see it can't push because these are out, so therefore these can't push up and down, which creates some pretty major problems um, when it comes to... Let me go ahead and uh, do this quickly here. But that creates some major problems when you're thinking about the third digit because obviously it takes at least 10 or so uh, seconds to update this second number. Meaning if this is on a 9, this block that powers this third one will be there for a while. Meaning that these will be extended and these can't extend. So I've made a giant chain of repeaters. And I've been trying to optimize it as much as I can to get the exact timing um, that I need um, so that it updates on the right thing. But there's also another problem with that, and that's if it's too early, meaning I make this too early, then these will still be extended when these try to extend. Therefore, this number just won't even update. So if this is even one tick too early, this number won't work. So it, it's kind of hard to to do and it's uh, kind of really annoying actually to try and figure out and that's pretty much what I'm working on right now and then uh, I probably should explain this a little bit this whole mess of color coded wires all these are doing so this uh, this gray one here you can see runs all the way to this bottom set um, and this is just explaining some principles of how the clock works so you can see this this gray wire is responsible for powering this piston right here Meaning, if uh, we were displaying a number like a 2, what we would have to do is, number 1, put a wool block here to power this one and power all the other torches that are holding the number 2 blocks, if, if that makes sense. And basically what I've done is I've just crammed all of that into this space. And yes, it is very, very uncompact. And you could probably make this with command blocks, but I decided I wanted to make it just, uh, you know, with, with actual redstone. And so... That's pretty much it for how that works, and I just wanted to uh, kind of pay uh, homage to one of my older designs. I This is the first time I've ever tried this. Um, after watching CMB Minecraft, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and make it on my own without watching the actual like step-by-step -step thing. And there's this behemoth of a contraption. So if I power it on, go over here. You can see also, I made the dimensions on this. I made this way too big, 
meaning there is an awkward delay between, and also, yes, this is slow and updates really poorly, but there's like an awkward delay between uh, 0 and 1. So we go 8, 9, and then since it's too long, you can see it's just cycling around, uh, around glass um, until it gets back to 0. So yeah, that was pretty much an epic fail on my part when I built this, but um, I guess it kind of gave me the idea and concepts for uh, that one over there. But anyways, let me- oh god, the pistons are way too loud. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this kind of video tutorial thingy. I know, again, I normally don't do these type of videos, but I thought I would just showcase uh, this and maybe even do an update video when I've finally got this third digit working. Um, and so, let me power this up here and kind of watch it go by. I don't know why, but it, it, the clock is just mesmerizing to watch. Just sitting here, yeah, I could sit here like for a long time and just sit here and watch it count because it's kind of cool. You can see it, uh, because I did put that number, uh, as I explained, on the 8, it does give enough time so that this uh, second number updates properly with this one. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Also, if you've made it to the end, I just want to thank uh, everyone uh, quickly here that's been subscribing recently. I have went in, I want to say like a week or so, from 50 subscribers, actually less than 50 subscribers, all the way up to 64 when I'm making this video, which is honestly insane. I don't know... Uh, why I'm getting so many, but honestly, I just want to thank every single one of you who has chosen to subscribe to this channel. It does mean a lot and definitely helps the uh, channel grow. Anyways, thanks so much if you got to the end, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.